Ah, the 60s. The time of Woodstock, love beats, peace rallies. They say if you can remember the 60s, you weren't really there. The two young people who were definitely there are Jared Evans and Ginny Wakefield. In fact, as we join them, they're hitchhiking their way around the country. And these two flower children are about to find a path strewn with thorns. Back in 1967, I'd known Ginny Wakefield for about a year. It was a summer of love, and we were crazy about each other. We are on our way home to Petaluma, California, after spending the weekend in Haight-Ashbury, where it was all happening. Oh, come on, stop! Peace, brother! I love Ginny. She was such a free spirit. We didn't care about anything. The future was now. <laughs> we hitched everywhere, to love-ins, to peace rallies, to rock concerts. Well, on that day, we're having a lot of trouble okay. getting a ride. Why don't they stop? There's bad vibes in the air. We want to be a little uptight tonight. Oh. Uh. <laughs> hey, baby, I am starving. You got any more like granola left? Actually, we ate it all. Finally. Hey, what's happening? Thanks for stopping. This is far out car. This is the right road to Petaluma. Straight ahead. That's where we're going. Hey! That, that's a real bummer. We forgot about the Mustang and caught a ride with a truck driver. He dropped us off at a general store on the outskirts of Petaluma. You two need some help finding something? No, we're cool. Ginny and I were starving and broke, so I decided to liberate some food for the cause. I didn't notice that the owner was watching us in the security mirror. You gonna pay for that stuff? The owner of the store called the cops, and 20 miles down the road, they caught up with us. Being arrested for shoplifting and stealing a car was bad enough. But what happened next changed our lives forever. You got a dead body in here. What? We had nothing to do with this, I swear. All we did is list some food, and the guy had a shotgun, so we took the car, but we didn't kill anybody. Freaks are in a lot of trouble. We told the police about the blonde woman with the lady luck tattoo, but they didn't care. Lots of people hated hippies back then, and we were found guilty of murder in the second degree. Ginny and I spent the next five years in prison while we appealed the case. We were finally able to get a new lawyer, and he got us a new trial. Because of the lack of evidence, the verdict was overturned, and we were freed. Ginny and I never stopped loving each other. As soon as we got out of prison, we got married and opened a small health food restaurant with money from our parents. We'd been in business for about five years, and we were doing pretty well. So we splurged and bought ourselves a used Mustang convertible. Jared, what are you doing? We're late. 
come on, Ginny. You remember how hard it is sometimes to get a ride? Right. Where are you headed? Just down the road a few miles. Oh, get in. Great. Get out of the car. Well, take it easy. We don't want to Shut up! Just get out. Ginny and I walked to a payphone and called the police. They caught the woman the same day and we got our car back. After we gave testimony at her trial, the old murder case was reopened. Fingerprints were found on a tire iron that matched the tattooed woman's. She finally confessed that she had stolen the car and killed the owner all those years ago. Could this really have happened? Could the same woman have shown up again years later and encounter the same couple? Was some force of fate making sure that the right person was found guilty of the crime? Or was it all just an amazing coincidence? Do you reject this segment as just another lie? Or will you give this piece a chance?